Listening to you talk, um, looking, you know, listening to the way that you think about things, you know, so much about the American dream was was a, a created thing. I, I say it all the time. The American dream was was actually designed by this guy, Edward Bernays, the guy that uh, created the term uh, public relations. Um, but if there ever really was an American dream, it's you. It really is. It's like your and it's interesting you brought up hidden figures because it's like you and Catherine, you you're you're you you all are mathematicians. You're women who are mathematicians. It's like you said, you did a computational, you know, um analysis that that basically illustrated that it was gonna take from two thousand ten all the way to two thousand twenty. Wow. Computer. And to stay the course, you know, right. to not lose steam you know when they come after you and try to like demonize you and turn everything against you i mean it's amazing if i mean i i love my country but if people really 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 realize it's like man you get mad at these guys at the capitol it's like they're not saying anything wrong you know i i, I love our country but you know mm -hmm. the, it, they learn insurrection from our founding fathers they were you know it, it, it's I, I and i'm saying that in a I'm trying to be respectful because there's a lot of things that they did do that they were trying to set up, but you know, they decided they wanted to part from the British monarchy or whatever. Um, and you know, they burned the tea up in the, in the Harbor and they tore down the King George statues. And, and, they, and, and when they did these things, they thought they were doing it for what felt like something good to them. And it's like, what you've done is you didn't tear anything down. You didn't burn anything up. And if anything, you just looked at what was there. And like I said, you did like this incredible anal analysis of how you could engineer change. And it was done in a way that is only inspiring people. Like you said, not everybody's going to get it, but the people who got it, even at the last minute, you give them the praise because they got it. And that, that's a leader. You're an incredible leader. Thank you. I, I hope I didn't I, say anything offensive about no, no, no. the I, insurrection. No, yeah. I, I don't think it's offensive. I, I would couch it slightly differently, though. Sure. The, the revolution was grounded, at least in theory, in the expansion of liberty, the expansion mm -hmm. of access, the expansion of autonomy. What mm -hmm. we saw happen on January 6th was a reaction to that expansion of liberty. These are people who were angry because they thought the wrong people voted. And yep. these are people who are angry and willing to murder our leadership, not because they were denied their rights. It was because they didn't like the outcome. And right. that's why I, I would put them in different categories that when you are rebelling in order to expand access, when your rebellion is grounded in giving more <laughs> to more, that is very different than trying to take away because you don't like the composition or the color or the outcome. That's mm -hmm. the part that, that I think is enraging people. In 2016, more people voted for Hillary Clinton than Donald Trump, but not a single person on that losing side stormed the Capitol. Mm -hmm. We didn't demand that we get to wipe out the nation because we don't like the outcome. Our job is to do, I think, part of what I do, which is I don't, I, when my election happened, I have no, I have no right to victory. No politician running for office has the right to win. But as a citizen of Georgia, I had the right to make certain that the votes were counted, that the people who wanted to participate could. And so my fight was to ensure that every person had their votes counted. And when they counted all the votes we still had access to, I didn't win. And so then I started to try to change the system so that the people who were denied never face that denial again. The people who got mad and stormed the Capitol, they weren't yeah. angry because people were denied. They were angry because they didn't win. And it's yeah. the moment we think that we are entitled to victory, that we are entitled yeah. to having our own way. That's the space where I think that the difference happens. And so I, 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 I understood your point. I just wanted to clarify yeah. it because, you know, people get out there and suddenly 
they're going to say yeah, G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just want to make yes, sure. Yes. I've been in politics yes. for a really long time, so I wanted to give you an opportunity to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we could have. By the way, we could have cut that out. I, I, <laughs> okay. By the way, I didn't. Th- I, I, you know, we and we could have cut that out. By the way, but yes, ma'am, I will. Oh, say, either way, whatever works. For I you. agree. I I agree with you. Um, I just think that that entitlement has been generationally taught yes. and instilled. Oh. You know. And if you read parts of the constitution that exists right now, you see where there is a preference. Oh. You know, um, and, and we don't have to get all into the, in the, into the weeds of all that. But, I, and by the way, I just want to put this out there. I wasn't happy with the result of, um, you know, <laughs> you not winning a governor because <laughs> I, 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 I just felt like it was a little hardwired. I'll put it that way, mm-hmm. hardwired. How's that? I'll be po- poetic that that about it. I, I felt it was hardwired, <laughs> right? Um, we've seen, you know, the, the toxic mentality of like gerrymandering and what it can do. Um, and there's a lot of hard wiring that's down there, but um, I have to say that, you know, while Georgia may have been politically hardwired one way at one point, it's amazing to see this new Wi-Fi system that you have installed. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. I mean, look, I, um, I, I wrote this book that came out last year. It's called Our Time Is Now power, purpose, and the fight for fair America. And Scott, to your earlier question, I write down a lot of the stuff I'm saying here. I write about it in the book, but Pharrell, to your point, voter suppression isn't this new phenomenon. It was written into the constitution. Our nation was built on this premise that we were going to deny humanity, access, and citizenship to certain people that we needed to be a nation but we refuse to include to be a democracy. And so you're absolutely right. And it's important that we understand that these aren't newfangled ideas. These are indeed, this isn't a bug in the system. It's the programming. Yes. You're, you're awesome. We were born <laughs> in the same year, by the way. Yeah. So I, I take pride in that. We're 73 babies. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm such a fan and I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I don't know everything about you. I just know the stuff that you do. It's like LeBron. It's like, I know him. We're friendly. You know, whenever he like wins something, I'm like, ah, good, great job, bro. Like, you know, we, we do that back and forth. Um, but, you know, you meet people that are just like different. You might not know everything about them, but something that they do tells you everything about them. Yeah. And I find that with your work. Thank you. You know, I find that with your work. It is very clear and evident as to who you are based on what you do. Other tone.